Yes, sir. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right, let's bring him in. All members of the jury are present and seated. Everyone else may be seated at the time later of the jury. Welcome back. Um, let me just ask, because I need to make sure that I do it on the record, and I may not have done it every other time uh, we've uh, brought you back or even started this morning. Uh, by show of hands, did anybody have any exposure to this case in the form of media, social media, or anything like that outside of the courtroom? At any time prior to coming back today, uh, during any of the breaks, during lunch, or during this break? I right, let the reflect, let record reflect no show of hands. Also, just in abundance of caution, did anybody discuss the case amongst themselves or with anyone else at any time? Let the record reflect uh, no, no hands. Uh, we're going to pick up where we left off, and uh, I'll allow you to begin. Thank you. Ms. Bergman, so I was about to show you State's Exhibit 64, and I'm showing you now State's Exhibit 64A. What I would like you to do for us is tell us, if you could, what we're looking at here. Let me zoom in a little more. Sorry. <laughs> You're looking at um, Chrome searches um, that were uh, made on the phone. Okay. And what I what I want to tell what I want you to describe is in the top left we see IEF report viewer. Um, is that in fact the internet? evidence finder program that you had previously described? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, is this a screenshot from what we would see in that program? Yes, it is. Okay. And so tell us, you said that we're looking at Android or Internet Chrome searches. Is that correct? Yes. On the left-hand side of this screen here, we see web-related and then a bunch of things underneath. Tell us what all that is. When it says it's web-related, it means it has um, things to do with um, a connection to the Internet okay. and getting information off the Internet. But I guess I mean in a broader sense, this screen, what is contained on the left side? Is that sort of everything that was pulled off the phone or explain that? Um, this is information that was extracted from the phone. Okay. Um, and then on the, in the top box here, what I'm referring to here, um, the top kind of right side box, what is that? Um, the first column, which says search query, um, indicates what was searched for, uh, the phone's date and time, and um, source and evidence information, which is just for phone information. Okay, so where it says search query and then we see words underneath there, that would indicate things that were searched for on the phone. Uh, per, yes, okay. search for on the phone or maybe even downloaded. Okay, it could be searched for or even downloaded. Yeah. Okay, and in the search date and time, what is that date and time reflective of? What does that indicate? It's reflective of the time that the phone is um, that the phone is recognizing. Okay, and for the record, judge, this exhibit is actually sixty four A through R, and that was sixty four A. Okay. Showing you State's Exhibit 64B, are these more Android Chrome searches? Yes, it is. And 64C, more Chrome searches. Yes. All right, now State's Exhibit 64E, what do you see here? That appears to be Google searches. So what's the difference there? It's just how the phone um, or the person who's um, on the uh, phone is interacting with the Internet. Okay. Um, Google may be a Google search. Uh, the Chrome might have been the, um, the application that was used to get onto the Internet as opposed to like Internet Explorer. Correct. Okay, the state's exhibit 64G. What is this? Uh, that is an email. Okay, um, and how, how do you know that? On the left-hand side of the screen, 
Um, we see IEF refined results, chat, documents. Right, and it's under the email categories, category. Um, it's under the email category. And then so. within that it says Android Gmail. Correct. Does this indicate to you that this comes from a Gmail? It comes from a Gmail account, yes. Okay. Um, and in the top, in the very top of the uh, doc, or the, the page here, um, in the very small section there where it says addresses to, from, does this indicate that this is, a, um, that this is an, an email that was received or was sent? It appears to be one that was um, received. It was received. Okay. And again, the date and time on it is reflective of the date and time that the phone was set to. Yes. Okay. Do you... Uh, one second. Are you all familiar with UTC time? Yes, I am. It's a universal time code. Okay. What is that? It's just... Um, it's, a, it's the code where um, it starts with zero. Um, when you look at time zones, you have your, um, your, your, your time zone of zero, and then it, like Eastern Standard Time is minus five, moving away from that. Um, other countries could be plus five, moving you know, away from it in a different direction. Okay, and when we look at States Exhibit 64C at the top here, does that indicate to you that these times are appearing in UTC time? Yes, it does. So does that mean that they're actually some hours before or after what would have been the actual time on the phone? Correct. States Exhibit 64I, does this, is this another email? Yes, it is. Okay, and can you tell from this whether this is an email that was received or sent? It appears to have been sent. By the, the Gmail account that was on the phone? Yes. And in the from category, does it appear to be sent by Nicole Nachman? That's what it appears to be. What is this here, and I'm referring to in the top middle of the document, where it says scan0001.pdf? What does that refer to? It's referring to an attachment that was sent with the email. And as a part of the extraction process, do attachments that were attached to emails, are those also extracted from the phone? If it's possible, yes. States Exhibit 64K, what does this appear to be? It appears to be another email. And can you tell whether this was a received or sent email by the Nicole Nachman Gmail account? It appears to have been received. Received to that account? Yes. And the from portion of it, do you see what email address that is? Not fully, but okay. it appears to be an e uh, another email. The beginning of it being that spec 735? Yes. Okay. Scrolling down to the bottom portion, I'll zoom out for a moment. Scrolling down to the bottom portion of this document, what, what is this down here in the, the bottom middle portion of the document? It appears to be the... Um, header portion of an email. Okay, so in, in this viewer program, when you click on something in the top portion, does it then uh, open up essentially in the bottom portion? Yes, it does. Okay. And is that what appears to be happening in 64i, or I'm sorry, 64k? Yes, it does. And 64l. What does this appear to be? It appears to be another email. Received or sent? It appears to be received. Received to the Nicole Nachman Gmail address? Yes. From that spec 735? Yes. And what is the date and time that you see it was sent? You're going to have to make it a little larger. Okay. 
August 20th, 2015. Okay, and did, what, what is the time that you see? 11-16. Okay, so if we see in the body of the email that it says, do you see the date and time reflected in the body of the email below? Yes, I do. And what is that date and time? That date and time is um, August 20th, 2015, 3.13 p.m. And State's Exhibit 64M, what does this appear to be? Another email. Sent or received? Received. To the Nicole Nochtman Gmail account? Yes. Exhibit 64O. What are these? That is um, Chrome history, um, internet history. So are these, um, so what does that mean, Chrome history, internet history? Um, it just means uh, websites or um, internet interaction that the phone had. Okay, so websites that, that the phone actually went to. It could be. In the body of this, down at the bottom underneath the, the, the top box that we see, in the bottom box, there is an end, it says web page title. What is that? That's just the title of the web page. Each page has a title. Okay. And, and it says there, Yahoo forgot email password Google search. Is that indicating a Google search that was done? It could be, yes. States Exhibit 64Q. Is this also another Android Chrome history? Yes, it is. Okay. So in these columns here, in this middle column titled URL, what is that? I'm sorry, could you repeat the question? Yes, yeah, sure. I'm sorry. In this, I shouldn't say middle column, uh, the left column that we see on the screen here entitled URL, what does that mean? That's the um, web address. Okay. So the web address that was went to on the phone? Yes. Okay. And then on the further right column, web page title, what is that? That's the actual title of that web page from the web page address. And State's Exhibit 64R is another um, URL and web page title uh, that the phone would have gone to. Yes. In addition to these documents that were just shown to you in State's Exhibit 64, A through R, um, and the Google and internet activity, did you also have an opportunity to recover text messages off the phone as a part of the full extraction that you did? Yes, I did. And I should have asked, I, you indicated that the extraction takes everything off the phone, is that correct? Yes, it does. So, um, internet activity, text messages, pictures? Yes, images, locations, um, if there's any information stored like passwords or things of that nature, um, notes, uh, web information, etc. Okay. Um, and when it's when it's all taken from the phone and extracted, does it put it? it you you indicated a disk is then provided to law enforcement, mm -hmm. a read-only disk. Is it categorized? Well, I break out the reports as to the different types okay. of. Um, information that they're receiving. Ms. Thurkhorn, I'm showing you what's been pre-marked to State's Exhibit 70 for identification purposes. Prior to today, have you had an opportunity to look at that document? Yes, I have. Okay. And does that document fairly and accurately depict text messages that you recovered or that were recovered off of the phone during the extraction you performed? Yes, it does. Your Honor, I'd ask to move into evidence State's Exhibit 70. I can approach. <laughs> You 
All right, Ms. Berghorn, and I'm going to go by page number on this. I'm going to show you States Exhibit 70. Even at the top of this document, what do you? Uh, what does this appear to be? An extraction report. Okay. There's a portion of the extraction report, and I say a portion of because obviously it's not the entire extraction from the cell phone, correct? Correct. Um, is this a portion of it containing SMS messages? Yes. What are SMS messages that we see here in the middle of the document? Um, SMS messages are just um, short messages that um, one can make from their cell phone. Okay. And at the top here we see page 329 of 421. Uh, would that indicate essentially 400 pages of messages? Um, no, it means that I um, took several different categories and I made them into one report. Okay, into one document. Yes. So SMS messages that we see here being 859, does that reflect there being 859 short messages? Yes. Page 330 of States Exhibit 70. All right. Okay. Um, in the left column, we see the numbers. Is that just kind of numbering the messages? Yes. And then inbox, what does that reflect? It means that inbox means that they the uh, message came in. Okay. And then we see also see sent. What does that mean? That means that the message was sent from the phone. The number that we see in the third column, what is that? That's generally the phone number. Okay. And then in this um, column, in some of these, we see Miriam Deans. Is that a name that you would have put into this report? No. What the, um, what the software does is it looks at the contacts um, on the phone, and if it can match the phone number to a contact, it will list the contact name there. So this is something the software itself is doing? Correct. The contact name is in the phone under contacts. The phone number is in the SMS message. So it's reaching out and seeing if it can make the match on the contacts to put the phone number there. And it just kind of automatically puts that in. You're not manually doing it? I'm not manually doing it, no. Okay. And the date and time in the fourth column here, it says UTC plus zero. We see dates and times there. What is that? Again, that's just the date and then the time um, of the universal time code. The plus zero just means that's neutral standard and it's not going either negative or positive in each, either direction. And then the sixth column, SMSC, what is that? I do not know. Okay. Does it have anything to do with the message that's, that, we're, that, it, that we see on this document? Objection. She just said she doesn't know. I do not know. Uh, um, caution the witness not to speculate. Okay. Um, the next column that says status, what is that? It means whether it was sent or read. Okay. And the next one that says message. That is the short message that was sent. Will the entire message appear in that box or column? It should. Does it cut it off or anything to your knowledge? Not that I'm aware of. And in the last column, it says delete. What does that mean? It just means that the message was deleted. So based on that, is it fair to say that the extraction process will recover deleted information from the phone as well? Yes. May I just have one moment, Judge? Yes. Yeah. I have one more question for Ms. Burke, I'm sorry. States Exhibit 64K. We see here in the two address, Nicole Nachtman in quotes. What, what does that mean? Like, as opposed to right below it, you see Nicole Nachtman at, and it appears to be an email. How is it that some of them are, like, titled like that? I'm not sure it would be in, an interpretation from okay. the software. Okay, so it's something the software pulls out. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that a yes? 
Yes. And then going down to the right, we see the from address and we see spec 735 in quotes. Then going down below into the body of the message, spec 735 at yahoo.com, um, what does it indicate who, who that email or what that email is associated with, what name that is? Yes, it's associated with Robert Dines. Okay. And is that a name that, again, the software is pulling out from the phone? I do not believe so. I think it's it may be coming in with the email. Okay, so that's the name that's on that email that's, that, that the phone's pulling out. Correct. Same thing with above that, the name Miriam Deans, and then the email that's addressed to that. Um, same thing, that's something that's contained within that email itself. It could be. Thank you, Mr. Horn. I'll pass it over. Examination. Good afternoon, Mr. Good afternoon. Now you indicated that the data you extracted from this phone you were given had a lot more stuff than just those two exhibits. Can you repeat with more clarification? When you extract and download all the data from this phone, you had indicated, or I thought you had said, there's things like photographs, if there's videos, there's content. Yes. A lot more than just these two exhibits that Ms. Derry just showed you is what I mean. Yes. It was extracted and downloaded onto a disk which was later then given to the case detective. Yes, there was. Okay. And I think you said on direct that typically in a situation like this, you don't really know the details about an investigation or a case. That is true. You're given this device, asked to extract or download any data that may be on the device, and then it's later up to the case detective or whoever submitted the device to determine what's important and what's not on the device. That's correct. You don't do any of that analysis. No, I do not. So you have no idea what any of this information that Ms. Derry just asked you about has anything to do with Nicole Nachman or her case? No, I do not. I want to ask you a couple of questions about some of the entries. Sixty four A. Can you see that? Yes, I can. You had indicated that these are basically internet or Chrome searches, which we see over here on the left-hand side, right? Yes. So this one that happens to be highlighted in blue, it says getting away with murder, which it appears was searched on August 1st, appears to be song lyrics from some song. Is that correct? If you look down... I can only see what's on the, uh, what's on the list. Right, so if you go down, that same entry appears to say murder lyrics, as if it's some type of song. Is that what that says? You see where I'm pointing? It says, well, getting is not spelled correctly, but it says getting away with murder lyrics. As if to imply maybe some kind of song. Perhaps. Now, are you able to tell us what any of this means, like if an actual song lyric was downloaded or anything like that, or any file associated with that? When it says source, it's indicating where it was located on the phone, and the evidence number is just the evidence number that um, it, it is on, that it was given. So we can't tell from this document whether maybe some song lyrics were downloaded as a separate file or anything like that? No, we cannot. 64B, again, another blue highlight. This appears to be a search. Again, we're at Android Chrome searches, correct? Yes. The process for dropping out of college. Does that indicate that that's the search terms that are put into the Chrome system? Or, or what is that that we're, when we read that, for example? It means that at some point, part of that process of dropping out of college was typed in.
64G, I believe you were shown this document that appears to be some sort of email that starts off Nicole Nachman and it appears to be something to do with housing. Where does this indicate as far as the date and time this was sent where it's indicating that they're, they're telling Nicole Nachman she has a space available on campus? Are you able to tell from this document the date and time that this was sent to her or opened? It appears to be September, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, August 19th, 2015. And is that from the top, that blue highlight at the top yes. of the document? Yes, yes. And that was going to be my next question. There's d various columns up there. How are we to tell when something is sent versus when someone actually opens it or accesses it? Okay, so I can send you an email mm -hmm. today, right now at 2.26 on July 26th, and you don't open it, let's say, till 9.30 p.m. tonight. Where is that going to tell me that information on, on a document such as this or in any of these columns? It may not. Okay. So what this says is that an email was received from housing on August 19th, but nowhere in this document from what you can see lets us know whether the person saw it, opened it, or for that matter, accessed it. That is correct. As far as the dates that are covered, and I'll show you page one just to clarify. I'm sorry, A, 64A. It appears that the only communications reflected or e searches or data begins, it appears, the first date, August 1st of 15. Is that correct? Yes. And then I'll show you the last one, which is 64R. And it appears the ending date would be August 21st, 2015. And then what, what does it indicate the last time is? 106. Now let me ask you this, sometimes when data or cell phone records, they're recorded in universal time, where sometimes you gotta subtract like four hours or add four hours. Do you have to do that with this type to get it in real time or Eastern time, or do you know? Um, the system reported it in UTC time. If, the, if it needs to be adjusted, it would have to be adjusted manually. By four hours, is that correct, to get it to Eastern Standard Time? Is that your understanding? Either four or five hours, depending on daylight savings times. So these times would not have been reflected Eastern Standard Times for any of this information? I don't believe so. to say, in addition to not being able to tell us based on this report or this data when someone may have opened or accessed one of these communications, you also can't really tell us, for that matter, who sent what. No, I cannot. Without standing in front of the device or observing the person actually sending messages or receiving messages, there's no way to tell from what you did in this case <coughs> to determine who actually sent or received any of these communications or did any of these searches. That is correct. Now, with regard to the text message document, and that states Exhibit 70, you had kind of identified for us the various um, columns, and if you need to see the document, let me know. And you had indicated sometimes in the party column, while there'll be a phone number, sometimes a name will be referenced in it if the contact was pulled associated with that phone number within the device. Is that what you said? That is correct. But you were not asked, nor do you know uh, what various names in this report are as far as whose phone number belongs to who? No, I do not. When Miss Derry was asking you about the internet searches back, um, going back to States Exhibit 64, I thought I kept hearing you say those could have been the searches. What did you mean by could? 
because when you're doing searches on the internet, um, there are times when um, you might um, click to link to another link. When you go onto a website page, there's usually like ads or other um, information that could pop up. That information could also get captured by the phone. So what you're telling me is you can't say that on six, state 64 that in fact when we see those, and let me show it to you again just so we're all on the same page, 64A, for example, the song lyric, what we, I didn't mean to write on the screen and I have no idea how to delete that, I'm sorry. There's a button you push. There we go, there. clear. <coughs> Apologize. Um, so when I was asking you earlier about this getting away with murder song lyrics, you're indicating to me that that column could have picked up, let's assume someone went in and pulled up the lyrics to a song, and then ads start popping up on that website. Those ads are also going to be reflected on this column? No, ma'am. Um, those are searches, and those have been typed in. Okay, so what were you discussing earlier? When we were looking at the URL, web pages and web titles. I'm going to show you state 64 and you show me which document you were talking about. Thank you. So you pulled out 64O. Was this the only one or were there more than one? I do believe there was more than one. But let's just start with 64O. So these that indicate Andro, Android Chrome history in the left-hand column, and then in the right-hand column, they appear to have, um, I guess you call them URLs or website addresses, I guess? Yes. What you mentioned earlier about these could be reflective of searches done, this could also include what we just described a moment ago, where I go onto a specific website, and then that website takes me to other things, and that would be picked up on this list. Is that what I heard you say? I think I need to clarify that there's a difference between a search and a web history. Okay. A search is when you actually type in... Um, information where you're looking to search for something through Google. Internet history is when you actually go onto a website page and it's collecting that information of pages that you've gone on to. Got that part. Now I want to go back to the could be or could reflect what this person actually went on as far as website addresses or URLs. When, uh, when, other, when, when you're on a website and other um, ads or such pop up, you may select those. If you select those, that information will also be collected. So this list could encompass addresses that the individual typed in and then addresses that may have popped up while they were on that address and then that person went on to that additional URL. It could. It collects all the history that you're as you're um, going through the Internet. So you pulled out... States O as a possibility for that concept. I'm trying to go through my alphabet here. States P, is that the same situation with P? It could be. I don't want you to get the impression that the phone is just arbitrarily going through the internet on itself. Right. It's having some interaction with a human. Right. So the human is getting into a website and then maybe there's these pop-ups or ads popping in and if they click or go on to those additional things, this list is going to capture it. Yes. Does it necessarily mean that this list includes only what the user typed in into that web address box of the site? That again is a search. Okay, we're talking about web history now. We're talking about the, the websites that the um, user actually go, went on to. Okay. And so the same would apply to states P, the document in front of you? Yes, it indicates the history, the Internet history. States Q? Yes. And states R? 
Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bergman. Thank you, Deborah. Here we are. May this witness be excused by the state? Yes, sir. And by the defense? Yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. You may be excused as a witness at this time. I'll ask the state to call your next witness. Lacey Zacker. Lacey Zacker. Yes, sir. Zachary, good afternoon. If you'll come forward to be sworn wherever you're comfortable. If you'll face me and raise your right hand, please. Thank you. Do you swear affirm any testimony you give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God? Yes, sir, right here. Thank you. If you'll follow the bailiff around as the ramp that leads up to the witness chair, please watch your step. When you get to that chair, go ahead and have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. That microphone is adjustable. Okay. Prior to beginning this witness, the state would move into evidence state's exhibit number 48, which is the certified business record. Any objection? Okay. It'll be admitted. Good afternoon. Hi. Please state your full name and spell your last name for the record. It's Lacey Zacker, Z A C H E R. Thank you. Ms. Zacker, are you employed? Yes, ma'am. Where are you employed? The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. And what is your position with the Sheriff's Office? I am currently a training specialist. Okay. How long have you been employed in total with the Sheriff's Office? Um, almost 10 years. Prior to being coming employed as a training specialist, what was your prior position? I was a senior criminal intelligence analyst. How long were you employed in that capacity? Um, over nine years. And is that the position that you were working in in May of 2016? Yes, ma'am. Tell us what that position entails. Um, so as an intelligence analyst, we typically look at different types of crime data and offense data, and we try to identify patterns and trends within the data and um, try to identify known offenders that would kind of match up to those patterns and trends. Um, and then we also assist in criminal investigations whenever necessary, um, whenever there's data involved that they need help either analyzing or visualizing. Okay. Do you, uh, were you a sworn law enforcement officer? No, ma'am, I'm a civilian. Okay. Um, do you work with, you said that you, you work on investigations, do you work with detectives, do they bring you evidence and you help to kind of go through it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are there various software programs that you are familiar with to enable you to perform that job as a criminal intelligence analyst? Yes, ma'am, lots of software. Okay. And I want to talk specifically as it pertains to cell phone records. Okay. Tell us what types of programs you would utilize to help um, provide this assistance on cell phone records. Um, so there's a few different ones we would use. Um, Cellhawk would be one, and Cellhawk um, mostly is used for, like I said, data visualization. So the evidence, the records are still the same, but these tools kind of just assist in um, making the data e more easily visualized. Um, another one is ArcGIS, which is also a mapping program, and um, it's pretty much just mapping the data points on a map. Um, another one we would use is Google Maps. Pretty much they all perform the same functions. It's just a matter of kind of which tool is the best in which situation. Okay. So I want to turn your attention back to May of 2016. Did you become involved as a criminal intelligence analyst in a case involving Nicole Knock? Yes, ma'am. And what were you asked to do as it pertained to that case? Um, I was providing some cell phone records, and I was just asked to um, create a video map of the records. And is that, what, is that the time, May of 2016, were you involved in the case at any time prior to that? No, ma'am. I'm showing you what's been introduced as State's Exhibit 48. If you could take a look at this um, exhibit, take a look through it, and let us know if you recognize that. Yes, ma'am. So these are the, the phone records that I was provided. Okay. The phone records that you were provided for what phone number? The number is 
2994. Okay. And when you were provided with those phone records that you have in stage 48, were they in an electronic format or paper format? Yes, ma'am. They were electronic. Okay. And is that common? Is that usually the way Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So when you receive, and I'll take them back from you, when you receive these records in an electronic format, tell us what you did with them. Um, so I kind of review them, kind of look them over, see what I have, what the time frame is on the records, um, just to kind of familiarize myself with them. And then in this case, I um, imported them into Cellhawk, the software. Uh, there's no manipulation or anything of the data. The software recognizes the file that I just import into it, and then um, it plots that data on the map itself. Uh, and then I can just kind of look around, do different animations, in this case like a video, um, of the records. So you said that you utilize Cellhawk to do this? Yes. Is Cellhawk a program that you've used before? Yes, ma'am. Is it something that you've um, been trained in how to use? Uh, yes, ma'am. A program that you're familiar with? Yes, ma'am. And you said that it doesn't, um, I think you said it doesn't change or modify the information, is that correct? Correct. It just puts it into a map to visualize it? Yes, ma'am. When it's put into that map to visualize it, are you then able to go back and look at the records themselves to see if it's the same information. Yes, and that's general practice. We'll go, I'll go back and I'll check the records what I'm looking at on the map and I'll verify that with the actual data in the records. The records that you were provided, do you recall what date range was covered in those records? Um, I believe it was, yeah, August 12th of 2015 through August 21st. Of 2015? Of 2015. Ms. Sacker, I'm going to show you what's been pre-marked as State's Exhibit 66 um, and State's Exhibit 49A through D. In looking at State's Exhibit 66, do you recognize this? I have not seen it before. Okay. Do you recall creating a video in this case? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and was that video contained of the GPS plots in this case? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and in State's Exhibit 49A through D, do you recognize that? Yes, ma'am. How do you recognize those? I created the maps. Okay. Um, are those a fair and accurate depiction of the maps that you created in this case? Yes, ma'am. Fair and accurate movement evidence, states exhibit 49A through D. Just the maps. Yes, yeah, just the maps. Well, they'll be a bit. Judge, if I could just have one moment? Yes. And I ask for permission to publish, Judge. You may. All right, Ms. Sacker, I'm showing you State's Exhibit 49A. Let's do that here for a moment. Tell us what we're looking at here. This would be um, for the date of August 18th, 2015. Um, the Sorry if I point. The red star in the middle is um, representative of the address 14108 Fensbury Drive. And then the dots you see with the um, coordinate next to them, those symbolize uh, a cell phone tower. Um, the, dates, ahead, the dates and times there associated with those towers are the, um, according to the records, those would be the, the dates and times that a call utilized that tower. The information that we see in states 49A, these um, the dates and times and that sort of thing, is that information that's taken directly from the cell phone records? Yes, ma'am. Okay. What is this? 28.092, what is that? So that's the coordinates. Those are also referenced directly in the records. Those are the actual coordinates of the, the tower location. The, okay, like latitude and longitude? Yes, ma'am. Of that tower location? Yes, ma'am. So if we look here at the top coordinate at 818 and 1850 hours, um, and then showing you States Exhibit 48, the cell phone records from Metro PCS, and we look here at um, 818 and 1850 hours, do you see that? Yes, ma'am. As we go across here, 
the latitude and longitude that is shown, would that then be the same latitude and longitude that we see in states 49A? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so on, does that continue as we go through the record? That's correct. And so does this map um, pinpoint the places that were contained on those records that this phone would have been at at those dates and times? Um, not necessarily the location of the phone, but the, the tower that that phone utilized to process the call. So explain what that means. Um, so the, the phone itself doesn't have to be at the same place the tower is, but when you, when you make a phone call, um, it's going to kind of pick up its nearest signal from the nearest tower, um, and that's what's going to be, that's what's going to process that call um, on that device. So the pinpoint itself is not of the device, but it's of the tower that the device utilized to place the call. So the tower closest to where that phone was when it was used? Should be closest to, not a precise science. Sure, sure. it was in that general vicinity. Correct. Okay. And is that why for some of the calls on, for example, 818, 1850 hours, we see three calls in that same general location? Correct, they utilize that same tower. States Exhibit 49B, what is this of? Um, same type of similar information. This is just for the date of 8 19 15. This was all of the, the records for that day. With the reference point of 14108 Fensbury Drive um, still on there as a red star. Correct, and the towers are still the blue dots. Okay, so these blue dot towers, we see one, two, three, four. Is that accurate? Yes, ma'am. And then everything above the, the tower on the top, those are all, in some way, the phone being used near the vicinity of that tower. Correct. Is that just phone calls or text messages or what? Um, can I review the records? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, those would all be phone calls. Only phone calls. Okay, and States Exhibit 49C. What is this? Um, again, same type of data. It's just showing now this is for August 20th of 2015. Still with Fensbury Drive as the reference point in the red star. Yes, ma'am. And 49D. What is this? Um, so this is the um, data for August 21st, 2015. Okay, and where is this map location of? Um, this is near the Tallahassee area. If you kind of look to the, to the left of the map, you can see where it says Tallahassee. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And prior to your work at the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, you worked as an operations analyst. Yes, ma'am. So you had no formal training as far as education in IT or computers or anything like that with regard to analysis about cell phones and things like that? No, ma'am. In fact, when you worked at the Sheriff's Office and at the time you did this case, you were really working in terms of trying to research crime trends, patterns, things like that as far as analyzing information the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office was, I guess, obtaining? Um, yes, but one way we do that is through mapping. So mapping in general, maybe not specifically to cell phone records, but mapping in general is, is something that was is done regularly. 
And really any training you had to do that type of analysis for the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office was mainly on the job training. I think you said you were there for nine years. Correct. Now, as far as your training, as it relates to actual cell phone records, like Ms. Derry showed you in State's Exhibit 48, um, really just online courses as far as your training in that. Online courses and then um, speaking with the companies themselves. So a lot of times when you get the records, like you can always call up their law enforcement line and ask questions. Like what does this code mean or this code mean or things like that? Correct. And as far as the software you use in this case, CellHawk, You've had one hour online course. Yeah, first cell hack when you first when cell hawk when you first started using it. Yeah, and cell hawk was used for the video. The static maps we just looked at were ArcGIS. <clears throat> Prior to this case, you had never even really testified in court as it relates to cell hawk at all, had you? No, ma'am. Is this your first time? Yes, ma'am. And you definitely don't consider yourself any type of expert in cell phones or cell phone analysis? No, ma'am. Or even cell phone mapping for that matter? Correct. You just obtain the data from the detectives, as in this case, they hand you a stack of phone records, and you plot them um, into, sometimes you use things like Google Maps, and then that's when maps like states 49A through D is created. Um, yeah, that was through ArcGIS. What is that? Um, it's another type of mapping software. Like Google Maps? Yeah. Okay. They all kind of work the same. Now, as far as the coordinates that we talked about in 49, let me show you A first. Okay. These coordinates that you indicated that you get from the cell phone records, which document, basic, document the longitude and latitude of the cell phone towers, you have no specific knowledge or information as to whether those are accurate or where those come from. Correct. You also didn't go out to these specific locations and verify that, in fact, that cell phone tower that's on this map is really still in that location. No, I did not. Let's say Metro PCS moved a cell tower um, or decided to add a new one to the area. You didn't do any of that type of verification in this, in this case. I did not do any verification, no ma'am. And you can't testify to where, in fact, T-Mobile or Metro, I believe these are Metro, PCS cell towers are actually located within the Carrollwood area or the city of Tampa. As Only far as their the actual physical location where you went out and you said, Right, okay. no, I didn't physically verify them or physically see them, no, ma'am. You're also not able to tell this jury what a specific cell tower reaches. Correct, I'm not able to do that. I think you testified on direct that you can't even, this, this map in no way tells you where the precise location of this cell phone was, is that what you said? That is correct, yes ma'am. What it's telling us is that if the cell phone was in use at the time of these calls or text messages, that it pinged off of this particular tower. Yes, ma'am. But it in no way tells us it was 100 feet from the tower or it was three miles from the tower. You're not able to tell us any of that type of information. Correct. How close the actual cell phone was to these towers when these calls or these text messages were made. Yes, ma'am. In fact, you also can't tell us whether if, in fact, there are two cell towers in kind of the general vicinity of each other, if it's pinging at the closest tower or maybe it picked up a signal somewhere else because that signal may have been stronger. Correct. In States 48, page 1, I'm, I'm actual subscriber information page for this phone number that you've identified as 506-2994. Um, and again, that's the phone number whose records you used to make the maps that the state showed you, correct? Yes, ma'am. Indicates that the subscriber name is Miriam Deans, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. It also says the account name is Miriam Deans. Yes, ma'am. And you'd agree Nicole Nachman's name is nowhere on this document. Yes, ma'am. I think Ms. Derry asked you, but just to be sure, you're not able to tell us from these phone records whether or maybe you said you could, I wasn't sure, whether you can identify whether one of these entries is a phone call versus a text message or vice versa. 
Um, yes, on the records it, on the on the records themselves, it'll it will say like outgoing call. Okay, so you look to the DIR column, and let me show you states forty eight just to be sure. This is the column you're referring to, Ms. Fulger. You wrote on the screen if you could push that. Thank you. Yes, yes, ma'am. Incoming call and out outgoing call. And then, what if something's a text message? What will it say? Um. You would see it in that column. It would say incoming text or outgoing okay. text. So we're to assume that at least for pages one of this document, everything's an outgoing call or an incoming call. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. Secker. Thank you. Ms. Secker, Ms. Hersey Bulgara had asked you if you're, that you personally are not able to say yes, there's a cell tower at that location, or whether Metro PCS may have moved the cell tower or anything like that, correct? Correct. In those phone records, does it say cell tower or does it say a latitude, longitude? Um, I believe it actually says latitude, longitude. Do latitude and longitudes change? No, not for a specific point. Okay. So while you can't tell us whether there's actually a cell tower at that little blue dot on the record, it's actually referring to a latitude, longitude that is then what you pull up on that map. Is that correct? Correct. And you indicated the ArcGIS program is analogous to Google Maps. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So that latitude, longitude is something that can be put into any map? Correct. Nothing further, Judge. May this witness be excused by the state? Yes. Well, Judge, subject to recall. Okay. All right. Um, you may step down, but you are subject to recall. Thank you. You don't have to wait outside, though. Okay. I'll ask the state to call your next witness. Detective Samuel Portolatine. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, just so you know, we don't plan to finish this next witness. We're going to take it up to close to uh, approximately 3.30 and get you out of here at 3.30. Detective Porto Latine? Yes, sir. Good afternoon and welcome. If you'll raise your right hand to be sworn, thank you. Do you swear or affirm any testimony you give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you God? Yes, I do. Thank you. If you'll follow the bailiff around to the ramp that leads up to the witness chair, please watch your step. Go ahead and have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. That microphone isn't just Thank you. Judge, could I have the detective uh, lean over to your bench with me and Ms. Hersey for a second? Yes. And I'll put on that. Okay. Please state your full name and spell your last name for the record. Yes. Uh, Samuel Portalatine. My last name is P-O-R-T-A-L-A-T-I-N. Thank you. Are you employed? Yes, I am. Where are you employed? With the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. And in what capacity? I'm currently a sergeant with the Internal Affairs Section. Okay. I'm going to turn your attention back to August of 2015. What, uh, I'm sorry, how long have you been with the Sheriff's Office? Since 2000, September of 2008. Okay. In August of 2015, what position did you hold with the Sheriff's Office? I was a detective in the Criminal Investigations Division and um, at... Uh, begin, I believe beginning in August, I went to the homicide section for a period of three months. Uh, at the time, they were doing sort of a three-month trial for new detectives that were coming over uh, for potentially working in the homicide section. And August would have been when I started that three-month trial. Did you have an opportunity during that period to respond to a call located at 14108 or 14110 Fensbury Drive? Yes, I did. And on what date did you respond to that location? On August the 20th. 2015? Yes, ma'am. And were you given an assignment or a role as it pertained to that investigation? Yes. And um, what was that? I was assigned to assist the lead detective. Detective Messer um, had been an established homicide detective. Uh, my assignment that day was to sort of mirror him um, as part of that trial period to, to learn and also assist at the same time. 
So what does that mean when you are assigned to assist the lead detective? What, what, did, what did you do? Uh, essentially, I'm there to help with whatever that detective might need done. Um, again, it, it, is, it was kind of a dual role for me in that I'm there to assist, but at the same time, my responsibility is to learn um, what is taking place and how investigations are put together at that point. And about what time did you arrive at the scene on that date? It would have been after, after 10 o'clock in the evening. Um, I received the phone call uh, from the then Corporal of the Homicide Section to respond. Um, and I'm probably, I live about half an hour away from the incident location, so it would have been a little bit after that, uh, maybe at 10.30ish, a little bit after that. When you arrived on scene, was other law enforcement already present? Yes. Was the scene secure? Yes. Was Detective Messer, Messer present? <clears throat> yes. What did you do after arriving on scene? Um, after arriving on scene, um, I located an area where it appeared to me that there was a group of detectives um, from homicide and supervisors uh, gathered together, so I, I went there to get whatever information I could on what um, I was going to be assigned to do. Okay. Did you begin to conduct interviews? Uh, after take the part in a briefing, uh, as we call it, uh, we got some initial information about what we knew, uh, what we were going to have to do um, pretty recently after that meeting. Um, I was assigned to go with Detective Messer and uh, conduct or help in conducting some interviews with what we believe to be potential witnesses. Okay. And who were the, who did you conduct interviews of with Detective Messer? So uh, if we were looking at the home where um, what I would describe as the incident scene, I believe it's 141, maybe 010 uh, Fensbury. It was just to the left of that. There was a, a husband and a wife and a daughter. Um, we conducted interviews with all three. Initially, it was the the uh, husband and the stepdaughter, and then later on, the mother came home and we interviewed her as well. Okay. Would this be the residence where the female body was located in the driveway? Yes. Okay. And when you conducted the interviews of these people, were they recorded? Yes. Were the individuals separated for the interviews? Yes, they were. <laughs> Did you also have an opportunity to take part in a search of that home? Yes. Okay. Was anything significant located? No. Did you learn information from them about the residence at 14110? Uh, we did. Um, n not much information, but we did learn some. Okay. And what did you do next after that? Um, the next thing I did was um, I reached out to the expressway authority to find out. Um, <coughs> Detective Messer gave me some information about a vehicle, specifically a vehicle for um, Ms. Natchman and uh, Nicole Natchman, and he wanted me to look into finding out if that vehicle passed by any uh, toll booths or if there any video of that vehicle traveling um, anywhere. So I, I did that next with negative results. Okay. Did you have an opportunity to search the area just immediately around 14110, the yard, the exterior of the home? Yes. During your search of the exterior of the home in that area, <coughs> did you locate any signs of forced entry? No, I did not. Okay. Any, anything um, indicating a, a screen had been cut or a window broken, anything like that? No. Did you also have an opportunity to search um, sort of the streets and neighboring areas nearby? Yes, I did. Did you locate anything, anything significant during that process? I did not. So you indicated that you attempted to obtain potential video from toll roads. Following that, what was the next thing that you did? Um, the next thing I did was join Detective Messer in his car. He made uh, several phone calls to Nicole uh, that were recorded, and I assisted with setting up. A, it's essentially just a, a digital recorder that has an earpiece that you plug into it. One earpiece would have gone in Detective Messer's ear, uh, and that has a microphone. Um, and from that, you're you're able to connect other earpieces, so you can listen to a conversation that's going on uh, without the phone being on speakerphone. And it also the digital recorder also records the conversation as it's happening. Prior to beginning this uh, this part in the phone call process, did you have an opportunity to meet with and speak to an Eric Lair or Lear? I did not. Okay, did Detective Messer? I believe so. Yes. Okay, to your knowledge. Um, and 
And then you said that sometime after that, Detective Messer made a phone call to Nicole Notman? Yes. Okay, and you were able to observe or listen to that phone call? Correct. What date and time did that take place on? It was that same evening. Um, I apologize, I don't recall the time exactly. I know it was getting pretty late in the evening. The evening of? The 21st. The 21st, okay, so... I believe so, or, or it could have gone into the morning of... I'm sorry, the evening of the 20th, or it could have gone into the morning of the 21st. I apologize, it was a long, uh, lengthy period of being awake, and some of that just kind of merges together for the me. The hours just all blend together. Yes. But at some point, either late that evening or early in the next morning, that's when the phone calls were made. Correct. Okay. How many phone calls were made, if you recall? Three. Okay. And who was a part of those phone calls? Detective Messer um, is, was the only one speaking, and I was just listening. Okay. Was there also a phone call? Did you Were you present for any phone call made with Eric Blair? Yes, that took place later on, um, not at the same location. I believe we relocated to um, Nicole's uh, grandmother's residence, and that's where that phone call took place. Were all of these phone calls, both with Detective Mes Messer alone and with Eric Blair, were they all recorded? Yes. During your time, I believe you said you later went to Eric's house or met with Eric. Did you also have an opportunity to speak to a Miriam Lair? I know Detective Messer did. I, I didn't do most of the talking. I was present when they were talking, but I didn't have much um, a part of the conversation. Okay. And were both Miriam and Eric cooperative with law enforcement? Yes. The phone call that was made with Eric Lair and Nicole Nochtman um, that you said was, was recorded by law enforcement, was that with Mr. Lair's consent? Yes, it was. Okay. What happened after that? After the phone call, um, we actually, Detective Messer and I actually went our separate ways. I thought we would be heading back home um, to get some rest, but I got a phone call uh, indicating that I needed to go to the airport, uh, that we were going to get on a plane and fly to Tallahassee. Um, and I believe that was because Detective Messer uh, did. To um, well, speculation. I'll sustain it to speculation, cause of the witness not to speculate. Yeah. And, and don't say what you believe, but you ultimately went to the airport and boarded a plane to Tallahassee. Correct. About what day and time was that? That would have been on the 21st. August 21st? Yes. Do you recall about what time? Morning, evening, afternoon? It would still have been uh, the morning, but closer towards the afternoon. Okay. And yourself and Detective Messer flew to Tallahassee. Yes. Did you at some point make contact with Nicole Nochtman in Tallahassee? Yes, we did. Did you meet with investigators from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement in Tallahassee? Yes. And did yourself, Detective Messer, um, work together with agents from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement when you were in Tallahassee? Yes, we did. I'm going to skip ahead for a moment. Um, during the time that you're in Tallahassee, are you actively, yourself and Detective Messer, relaying information back to Sheriff's Office detectives in Tampa? Detective Messer was keeping me informed, but yes, he was in contact with them. Communicating with them. Yes. Um, and during the time that you were in Tallahassee, did you learn at some point that a search warrant was obtained for a buckle swab for Nicole Knock? <clears throat> yes. Okay, and tell us, what is a buckle swab? So a buckle swab essentially is just... Um, uh, we take some cotton swabs and an individual's, the inside of their cheek is swabbed, um, sometimes on both sides to get a DNA sample. Um, and that's, that's what the buckle swab is. Detective, if you could take a look at State's Exhibit 41, let us know if you recognize that packaging in that envelope. Yes, I do. Okay, and how do you recognize that? Um, this is my signature on the back on the evidence state, along with my uh, ABN or our office phone number and the date, uh, which I signed when I impounded this into evidence. <laughs> you can open the package and take a look inside and let us know if you recognize the item inside. Okay.
Yes. So the item inside are envelopes that we put the cotton swabs in um, once we made the swab. Do those appear to be in the same or substantially the same condition as they were when you obtained them on August the 21st? Yes. All right, this time I asked to move the evidence. Stacey, is it 41? No objection. And so, Detective Portolatine, what you have in your hand, are those, in fact, buckle swabs that you personally collected from the mouth of Nicole Nachtman? Correct. Okay. And is did that take place in a room in Tallahassee? Yes, it did. Do you see Ms. Nachtman in the courtroom here today? Yes, I do. Can you point to an identifying article of clothing she's wearing? Yes, she's wearing the green blouse. Okay. Um, in addition to your interaction with Ms. Nachman, did you also have an opportunity to take part in a search of her dorm room? Yes, I did. Okay, and tell us about that, how that came about. I was informed that the search warrant had been um, obtained for the search of the, the dorm room. Um, I was I re relocated there with um, agents from uh, FDLE. We approached the room and um, the search warrant was read. We entered. And um, it was a sort of, a, I would describe it as like a waiting area. I don't think it was a room that was really set up to be a permanent type residence. Um, so there were several bunk beds and beds in there. But from my understanding is that it's a place where you wait until you get it permanently assigned. So we walk in, um, begun my search to the left. And at that point, one of the agents notified us that the, ad, or the address, the actual numerical on the warrant that was obtained did not match what was on the door. So we, we stopped and backed out. And then I waited outside until they got that corrected and signed by the judge with the correct number on the search warrant. And then they came back and then we started the search warrant there. And you kind of work on that methodically and start on one side of the room and then proceed through. Um, and as you find something, you document it. There's no objection from the defense. I'm going to introduce dates exhibit 23A through G. Thank you. And ask for permission to publish. You may publish. Sorry. Sorry. All right, Detective, I'm going to show you what's been introduced in states exhibit 23A. <clears throat> what do we see here? That's a photograph of one of the chairs in that room, as described in some documents that I found that appear to be um, documents pertaining to the dorm room with signatures on them. Okay. And 23B. Uh, that, that appears just to be a closer photograph of those same two documents. 23C, is that a closer view of one of those same documents? Yes. <clears throat> did these documents, the reason for photographing and locating these documents, did they appear to pertain to Nicole Nachman? Yes. Have name and other indications on them indicating they belong to her? Correct. States Exhibit 23D, same thing? Yes. And these were all located in that room, and do you, I'm sorry, do you recall what that room number was? I do not. Okay. States Exhibit 23E. What do, you, what do you recognize or what do you recall about this picture? So it's another um, kind of larger sofa chair in that same room with uh, a Toshiba laptop and a, and a kind of a, a laptop bag is what I would describe it as. Okay. 23F. That was a, um, a briefcase or suitcase that was in the room. Uh, and items of clothing that were in it as well. And 23G. That is uh, what I recognize to be an Apple computer uh, adapter. Charger type cord? Mm -hmm. Charger.